Recording in progress. Here, fifty seven or four thousand pounds we say. Oh, for a thousand to sing, my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad the honors of Thy name. Charms are fears and bids our sorrow cease. Tis music in the singer's ears, tis life What is it then that God is trying to tell us? Oh, fire. <laughs> no. So fire. So fire. No. no? Come on, let, let August tell us what's right. What, what is it? That's fire. That's fire. Okay, that's fire. That's what I said, you know. <laughs> I even have it written here. <laughs> what do you think about that, Mike, when you have something new like that? A new expression, a new lingo coming from the young folks. Huh? The only way I know how, and that's in my, my language. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's the current Generation Z slang for off the charts. Off a, uh, awesome. When something happens that is dynamic, amazing, and as we older generations might say, really, really cool, it's now so fire. Say it with me, so fire. That's fire. That's fire. <laughs> That's fire. That's fire. Okay. okay. So now you're with it. What was that, Candy? Oh, that's oh, oh you gotta snap. you gotta do the snap. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, people in the workforce recognize fire as a different concept. For many, fire means financial independence, retire early, a lifestyle aspired to by many. Now the idea is to work hard and and long in your early years so that you can retire early and enjoy your later years. Sadly though, this strangely strategy has backfired for many, leaving some retirees to languish for years upon years without a feeling of connection or purpose. While their money declines rapidly in an inflation economy, so what, so the economy, some have return to the workforce. In their later years, due to the necessity, some due to financial or psychological need, a panacea for the dilemma. Now I retired for 18 years and I'm back at work. Yeah, so, but I didn't come because of necessity. But there are many people in our society who are going through that. We need connection. The fire lifestyle may seem enticing in short term, but it's a purposeful engagement with something that fires us up, that makes us feel that life can be so fire. That fire. 
not the kind of fire life in which we retire and remove ourselves from work, mission, or purpose and connection, but the kind of life that immerses us entirely within. That's a key word. That you immerses us entirely within. And that means that there is something happening inside us that's good. And that's what's entering into the life of God means. It's a kind of spiritual life in which we exude joy, peace, holiness, and intimacy. And it happens right in here, right and now, no matter our other circumstances. Eternal life, which was read to us by our brother Charles. That's the promise Jesus makes to his disciples. But what does exactly mean? What does exactly, what does eternal life mean to you? Anyone? Yes, I'm not going to catch you. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. That's an excellent definition. What is eternal life to you? Transcends death. Transcends death, okay. What else? It has to do with the now as well. To, to do with the now as well. Tell me more about that. Where's August? <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think I become more alive with the eternal in the right now. Thank you for that. Any anyone else? Eternal life. I saw just saw Alice. Hi, Alice. Good to see you. Tell them what's eternal life. I didn't hear what you said. Tell, tell us what eternal life is in your definition. My definition, eternal life is life with God. Life with God. My goodness. Got a lot of intelligent people here. Uh, uh, Augustus has one. It's a way for believers to live a life that is separate from the death life of society. Separate from the what? From the life of society life that of leads society. to death. Okay. It's a way okay. to live separately from that. Anyone else? Eternal life. Many of us think we know it. And many of us even take it for granted. Eternal life. Bobby, you want to comment on that? It's a promise. It's a promise? Okay. Let's see what it says here. <coughs> it's not the kind of fire life, or oh, there it is. Eternal life, that's the promise Jesus makes to his disciples. But what does this exactly mean? Scholars tell us the word eternal life here in Greek is zoe ionis. Who's Greek among you here? <laughs> and is that you? No, no? Okay. The phrase suggests a kind of life that happens in a fullness of time. It refers not to the duration of time or a future destination in life, but a quality of life based in the knowledge, another, another Greek word, ginosko, the knowledge of God, the knowledge of the triune God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As we said when we talked about the way of Jesus, eternal life, in a sense, is not something we look for the hereafter, but something we can have right now, a fully intimate personal relationship with God in which we know God's spirituality emotionally, deeply, and truly. 
We bond with God in a way that makes one with God. One with God. Think about that and what that would mean. And you know, Patricia is right on target. You don't even need all this. Yeah, you're right on target. It is living the here and now. But in a sense, a more of a spiritual, where we can have emotionally, deeply, and truly connected with God. And what Jesus is saying, that let's not wait for hereafter. Live that life now. And that is the eternal life that we're talking about today. Jesus explains to his disciples that he has had this relationship with God himself. As he completed his mission on earth, he now offers the same kind of relationship with his disciples so that they too can know God, know Jesus. I mean, really know Jesus and know God in a personal in a person of the Holy Spirit. Holy person, Holy Spirit personally and intimately can, can therefore do amazing things in Jesus' name. And that is power to have that, to have an inside track. That is powerful. That's fire. The Holy Spirit is, is staff is therefore with a mission to unify the disciples with God with each other in a way that enables them to harness the power of healing and change that will in which will, that will enable them to make an impact in a world in which they are living now. You can have, when you have that deep relationship with God, you can actually harness the power of healing. The power of healing and change that will enable them to make impact in a world. We have had a, a very extensive relationship, haven't we, Richard? As I visited you, did you have that sense? Did you have that sense that, as I visited you, that there was a power that was present? Power that's present? Toward healing. Yeah. Most, most definitely. Yeah. 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 I found that too. You know what? Part of that is you were very receptive. You were very receptive. And that is available to all of us. When Carol and I visited with you, Bobby, did you have that sense? That 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 healing, that caring? Yeah. We all had that within us. And, 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 and any, any of the caregivers in this, in this, in this uh, community, in this church, you have those, those gifts that would enable you to, to say, yes, you're okay. We're okay. So that fire, spelled F-I-R-E, stands for fully intimate, relational, and exceptional. Fully intimate, relational, and exceptional. The last part is what we, we, we lack. We could be, you know, we can be uh, in an intimate relationship, which is deeper than just saying hello, but also in the relational. But the key is the exceptional one. That's a level that's a lot higher than the common social dialogue that we have. And that's what Jesus is talking about. How does that spell again? Fully intimate, relational, and exceptional. In him, we will discover our true identity, our purpose. That's a hard thing to do. Some people are still asking a question when they're in their 50s, saying, you know, I still don't know who I am. But in a relationship, if you, if you stay with it, you will know your identity. Some of us do not have the voice yet. You know, I tell this to the young, young students, the high school kids, when I'm speaking to their class, I said, 
one of the best thing you can do is discover your voice. Once you discover your voice, you would have the confidence that's coming from within you. And that is power. That is fire. We, we, we feel our connection our, to, to ourselves. That, that, so you feel that within yourself. And the next step is that you find that relationship to God outside yourself. And then you find it, the relationship to the world. I love talking to you. To Mark, because he is a well-read man, and he understands the challenges of what's happening, the challenges we have outside this world. And many of our young people, young adult folks, high school kids, college kids, are struggling with that also, because they don't, do not have the norm that you and I went through. There are a lot of changes taking place. And so what we're, the church is asking is, let's get back to the basics where you can have your feet on the ground. And that way, you will know what fire is. We recognize the unity of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is known as a triune God. Not in a theological or rational way, but in a very experiential, again, that's you. Experience God in you. And then in a relational, you experience God w w w together as a community. And that's what we need in our church or any other church. And then the spiritual way. That is the immersion. Immersion within the spirit of God. And I see some of you have that talent. You know, you haven't stepped, you know, in it as, as thoroughly as you, you need to. But you have the talent. You have the basic. You have the God's righteousness with you. Any of you who have been married a very long time know that to know things about a person <clears throat> is not the same as to know a person. Right? Scott, agree? Yes, yeah, I know that. I know that because she makes us know that. <laughs> that personal intimate knowledge of someone, his or her nature and being, energy and personality, heart and soul, that is a different kind of knowing, a connected knowing, a deep resonant knowing that allows us to bond with them with them heart to heart and soul to soul. <laughs> you can be, you can, you can reach out for any more than that. That's the ideal situation. And we can still bring that among ourselves, around us, and within us. That is what Jesus wants for us, with him, with God through the facilitation of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. We learned the last couple of weeks that Jesus meant by the way, that is way with a quotation mark, he is the way. The way of Jesus is relation, relational connection with him. He is the truth. The relational connection, that is engagement with Jesus and the Holy Spirit that allows us to live in our truth as well as in God's truth. One of the positive things that Carol and I learned yesterday as we, we, we visited with some of um, Mark's uh, staff is they are really very engaging people. You know, they're, they're looking forward to that relation. And that's all we ask is that engagement. Even the White House today, they would have a staff position, engagement. Actually, almost like a high level director rather than assistant secretary. But engagement commu of the community, 
engagement with the people of color, engagement with the women, engagement with the seniors, all this, all this position work for a guy who's the director of engagement. He is the vehicle through which we can have the same relational connection with God and in Jesus, even when he is not physically with us. That connection with him and God through the Holy Spirit that fires us up and gives us life for the journey, it's ours always. That journey is ours. And don't let anyone knock you down for that or, or laugh at you. But recognize that you are going through a, a, a journey that is Christ-centered. Now, this sense of life that I'm talking about will give us the energy, the purpose, the drive, and passion in everything we do. People get surprised. They get kind of surprised when, I, when I'm out in the public. You know, you may not know this, but I know Carol does. I get a lot of my ways publicly. I'm talking to, you know, maybe the government or in school system, wherever I go. I get my ways because of that opportunity that is within all of us. Within all of us. And you can get your way, but you got to do it in such a humble way humble way, and no sense of arrogance, because people can pick up on that. <clears throat> Life is connection. Through relationship, through connection, we find that we have the capacity to grow, to reproduce good things, to continue to change as long as life persists. You notice the movement? There's a movement. There's a constant movement in our life. When we are on fire, we are on fire. When we are in that relationship. In the book of Genesis, we see that God created everything that we know as life to be in relationship. Now think about it. We live in a grand ecosystem of interconnectional and relationship. Even the smallest particles are interconnected. Everything in existence exists interdependently. That was proven to us by Nicole, wasn't it his name Yet, last, yesterday? Mark? Wasn't that Nicole? Yes. Yeah, Nicole is uh, Mark's uh, uh, manager. vineyard manager. And she talks about all those, you know, those, those little things living, in, <laughs> living around. Microorganism. Microorganism. And how the ecology takes place. And she's aware of everything that exists there. And I said to her, there's 122 acres of, of vineyard. And I said, how many miles do you walk a day? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Yeah, so it's all part of an ecosystem. And obviously, um, the Lion's Vineyard is aware of that. And wor it's working in that direction. And I praise you for doing that, sir. The Gospel writer John often writes philosophically and as, as serially, sometimes lo losing us in his lofty description and theology. But Jesus' message is clear. He is passing on his status, his knowledge, and his blessing to those he is leaving behind. And thank you for being very clear about that. I really like the way you read that, Charles. He's passing it on to us. He wants them to know that they will have the opportunity as he did, to enter into the life of God, to know God in a way that will give them super energy and fuel for their mission, and that they will have special purpose in the world that only they can fulfill.
It's not special relationship. It's not reserved only for a few. But for all of those whose name as their who, who name Jesus as their own Lord and Savior. Those living in a world who still have much to do continues the mission of love and hope. That's what you and I are charged, to continue sharing the love and hope among those who are specially hurting. So get fired up, people. Get fired up and let the fire in the spirit live in you. That is the gift. You have been given that. Amen. Amen. So, fire. That's fire. That's fire. <laughs> all right. Is that all right, Augustus? Augustus? Was that okay? All right. You, you know, I could have preached, I, if you heard me for at least one paragraph, I just repeated that about 20 times. <laughs> All right, what's next? Loose offering. Loose offering is currently being donated to the Comida para Todos. Let us rise together and sing our doxology. Oh, yeah, we got to pass it first, don't we? Okay, take it back. May we rise, please? Closing him is 174. His name is wonderful. Pastor Tony, can I make one more announcement that I forgot earlier? Please do. Um, next Sunday is Pentecost, and if everyone could wear red for, for worship, that would be really a great thing. <laughs> next Sunday is Pentecost, so we're changing seasons. You know, one of the things I've never asked you since I've been here. Yes. Wear hats. Wear hats. Women in particular. Wear hats. <laughs> Just do that Sunday. Yeah. You can yeah. My mother, my, my, my mother, my mother made hats. And let, let me tell you, she was good. Do you know those folks in Piedmont, in California, Piedmont? And you know, they're rich. And guess who they came to have her hat made? My mom. 
So I'm, uh, I, I understand a millinery first that time. Anyway, could we do that, Carol? <laughs> Wear a hat. Wear your hat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh oh, some of you are looking strange. <laughs> Sorry, but let's let's That's do that. More look. Let's do <laughs> let's do something something different. One seventy four. His name is wonderful. <laughs> that is within these people, these people called Sonoma United Methodist Church. Amen. They teach, they rock, and they touch lives. Please, oh God, continue answering their prayers and supplications. These we ask in the name of the Father, the Son, and thy Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God be with you. <laughs> 